Welcome one and all to The Late Show. It's electric. Amazing. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Ladies and gentlemen, there is dramatic news out of Washington. The rudderless Republicans in Congress have moved tantalizingly close to doing the bare minimum because <laughs> today, this afternoon, in a narrow vote, they finally chose someone to be the nominee to possibly then be Speaker of the House. <laughs> that nominee is, drumroll please, Louisiana Congressman and gumball choking on a gumball, <laughs> Steve Scalise. <laughs> oh. Congratulations. Thank you, Louis. Congratulations, Steve. You are one step closer to having the worst job in the world. Just one rung below emptying the porta potties at a chili cook off. <laughs> in a surprising development, Scalise has already got the support of his chief rival, Ohio representative and dog in a man suit. <laughs> Jim Jordan. Jim Jordan. <laughs> mm. Scalise prevailed in his race despite Jordan being endorsed by Trump. When he heard the news, Trump immediately endorsed a new candidate for speaker Hannibal Lecter. Not a bad call. Not a bad call. In today's GOP, Lecter is a moderate. <laughs> Despite not getting Trump's endorsement, Scalise is a true MAGA Republican. Reportedly, he once described himself as David Duke without the baggage. <laughs> oh, the man really knows how to sell himself. What am I like? I'm less Pol Pot and more Pol Hot. <laughs> GOP is still deeply divided, and things have been a little tense lately. Just last night, Florida GOP Congressman Carlos Jimenez described the situation like this. Uh, I've already tasted chaos, and I don't want to taste it again. <laughs> Coincidentally, I have tasted chaos is also the slogan for TGI Friday's Wings Roulette Platter. <laughs> wings Roulette. <laughs> so one of the wings will kill you. OK. <laughs> Republicans have been at each other's throats ever since eight of their members voted to oust former Speaker Kevin McCarthy. One of those, South Carolina Representative Nancy Mace, was so upset for how she's been treated for her vote that she did this. Can you explain the A on your shirt and why you wore it? I, I'm wearing the scarlet letter after the week that I just had last week, being a woman up here and being demonized for my vote and for my voice. OK, that's a no. No, <laughs> that's not. The A just does not make sense. Wait, unless you see the guy she was standing next to. That makes more sense. That makes a little... Just a little more sense. That's a really dumb look. She looks way less Hester Prynne and way more Alvin Chipmunk. <laughs> Scalise's path to the gavel... Chipmunk's fans here, there you go. Scalise's path to the gavel was made a lot easier last night when Kevin McCarthy told his colleagues not to nominate him this time. Instead, McCarthy read a poem from Mother Teresa. Well, naturally, Mother Teresa is mostly known for her poetry. I hope you read this one. Roses are red. I'm up in heaven. Whatever you do, don't vote for Kevin. <laughs> really gotcha. So obviously, we got a little. We got, yeah, yeah. Scalise's victory comes in spite of opposition from McCarthy. For months leading up to last night's forum, McCarthy's allies whispered Scalise wasn't loyal enough while Scalise's allies whispered back that the speaker didn't trust the elected leadership team, to which Jordan's allies whispered, why are we whispering? <laughs> the, door, the door is closed. <laughs> it's just us chickens. One of the members who voted today is a real blast from the past. It's New York Congressman George Santos. <laughs> Seen here saying, I am a crook. As you'll recall, Santos might be the lyingest liar lying in Congress. Back in May, he was indicted for fraud and misusing campaign funds, and now he faces 10 new federal charges, including wire fraud, aggravated identity theft, and false statements to the Federal Election Commission. Let me just say thank you, George Santos. It's been a really tough week in the news, and we needed a treat. <laughs> the bitch is back for a squeakquel, and I am here for it. <laughs> I don't really know what that means. I don't actually know. It's a 
a chipmunk rev, a second chipmunk rev. The latest round of charges brings the total number of counts against him to 23. Congratulations, George. 68 more, and you can run for president. <laughs> apparently, uh, apparently, reportedly, Santos' entire campaign was just a cash grab. Among other things, prosecutors accuse him of running up thousands of dollars in fraudulent charges on donors' credit cards and stealing their identities. Okay. Stealing their identity. That's just greedy, George. You already have so many identities. <laughs> Anthony DeVolder, Anthony Zabrowski, Kitara Ravash. <laughs> Save some identities for the rest of us. Maybe I want to try on something new, like Clarissa St. Tartar, wealthy widow of the inventor of mixing bowls. Charmed, I'm sure. <laughs> Delacorte, more champagne. <laughs> The specifics outlined in the indictment are cuckoo banana splits. In one instance, Santos allegedly stole a donor's credit card number to transfer more than $11,000 to his own bank account. <laughs> Soikers. <laughs> Though people really should have been tipped off by his slogan. Santos 2022, that's my pin number. What's yours? <laughs> Santos also reportedly swindled $50,000 from two other donors and then used the money to buy luxury designer clothing. Good for you, George. You got to dress for the job you want, which, based on this outfit, is Willy Wonka's accountant. <laughs> when red tie with wow. the purple jacket and the purple shirt, I don't wow. think it goes. When confronted yesterday by reporters, Santos did the honorable thing and lied. No comment. I was. I did not have access to my phone. Prosecutors say no, you defrauded the American public. No will you resign? What you guys are talking about? No, I will not. Excuse me. Yes, he did not have access to his phone. He said while holding his phone. <laughs> phone. I don't have a phone. Bring, bring. Hello, Oprah. Yes, this is she. <laughs> Speaking of shameless grifters, failed Arizona gubernatorial candidate and woman who just rear-ended you in the Target parking lot. <laughs> Carrie Lake. Last night, Lake held a rally in Scottsdale, Arizona, where she launched her Senate campaign, even though she never conceded that she lost last year's race for Arizona governor. Lake is running for the seat currently held by Arizona junior senator and pile of stuff you bought on Etsy, Kirsten Cinema. <laughs> Cinema got elected as a Democrat, but later ditched the party to caucus as an independent. So if she runs, She'll also be challenged by Democratic Representative Ruben Gallego, and right now, Gallego is leading cinema and Lake in the hypothetical... Yes. Leading them in the hypothetical three-way race. No surprise, as anyone who's ever been in a three-way knows, the guy usually finishes first. <laughs> but... I don't know what that means. Wow. I don't know... I don't I'm, know what that means. Look at me. I don't... I don't know what... I work at CBS. I don't know what that joke means. But... <laughs> Carrie Lake is trying to rally conservatives by leaning into Trump. I don't know about you, but who else misses President Trump? I do. I do. <laughs> oh, man, I miss the mean tweets, too. It was the mean tweets that was making us safe. It was making us safe. Yes, she's right. The mean tweets are the key to safety, which is why our next Secretary of Defense clearly must be Jimmy Kimmel. <laughs> Now, thank you for your service, Strike Force. Oh, there's some news about injured Jets quarterback and Chicago cop at the beach, Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> Rodgers is anti vax, and lately he's taken issue with Chiefs tight end Travis Kelsey for appearing in a Pfizer ad. So last week, Rodgers went on ESPN and derisively called Kelsey Mr. Pfizer. Okay, that's not nice. You know very well his name is Mr. Taylor Swift's maybe boyfriend. <laughs> now things have escalated, and Rogers has challenged Kelsey to face off in the manly competition he's best at, TV debate. Mr. Pfizer said he didn't think he would be in a vax war with me. Oh boy. Didn't think he'd be in a vax war with me. This ain't a war, homie. This is just conversation. But if you want to have some sort of uh, duel, <laughs> debate, what is have me on the podcast. Come on the show. Let's have a oh. conversation. Oh. Oh. No! That's right. It's Monday Night Talk Ball. Are you ready for rebuttals? <laughs> me 
and the whole debate team will come on over tonight. <laughs> okay. Now, we cover a lot of tough issues on the show. If you watch, you know that. We don't okay. skirt away from the tough issues. But I'll admit that sometimes we fail to talk about the issue that matters most to you and your family, Bigfoot. <laughs> well, I have incredible news, because a new Bigfoot sighting shows clear video evidence of Sasquatch walking. Walking? Well, that must be what the big feet are for. <laughs> it's got to be real. Which means it's time for the latest installment of my cryptozoologic segment, Squatch Watch. <laughs> On tonight's episode of SW, we examine footage captured by amateur cryptozoologists. Wilder. <laughs> <laughs> you figure out what that word was. <laughs> it's all just part of the mystery. <laughs> It, the, the footage features Sasquatch behavior never before caught on film. Take a look. It's an elusive creature. All right, just squatted down. Oh, my God! <laughs> Squatting down. Harry's dropping the Hendersons off at the pool. <laughs> this is the most important discovery in cryptid science since they caught the Loch Ness Monster giving the Chupacabra a Dutch oven. <laughs> now, skeptics will say, but that there cannot be real footage of Bigfoot squeezing out his Yeti spaghetti. But look again. <laughs> okay, look again. Now freeze. Freeze it, Jimmy. Enhance. He's got a newspaper. <laughs> now, I told you it was an important issue. Now, this is a particularly historic sighting because the Squatch is native to the great woods of the Pacific Northwest. But this video was captured thousands of miles away in Colorado. Yes, Colorado, which means I have to issue a rare Squatch Watch alert. Bigfoot is high. <laughs> Gentlemen, ladies, we got a stone Squatch. He's out there. He's got the munchies. Colorado residents, guard your jerky. We got a great show for you tonight. Our guest is America's highest ranking Sasquatch, Senator John Fetterman. We'll be right back.